What is up, everyone? It is Diecast Buffet here again. Time for my 2024 playoff predictions. Yes, I know. There's a COT in here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I don't I don't think I have any Daniel Suarez next gen die kiss. Yeah, the 2024s haven't rolled out. I didn't want to use the Xfinity die kiss for it. So we're gonna go a little bit old school. Show some love to Carl Edwards, uh, the 99 car who kind of fills the the spot. So I apologize for the Suarez fans. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, th th this is not a very professional video. That's okay. We're going to have a lot of fun here. We're going to be doing some die-cast March Madness bracket playoff predictions. And I can guarantee you we're going to probably get them wrong. And these are my honest takes, by the way. So I'm going to try my hardest to get the most accurate ones. Probably going to be off by a mile. So uh, don't get mad at me if your favorite driver gets eliminated. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, our field of drivers. Some of the noticeable ones. Ross Chastain, out. Uh, a lot of people probably thought Bubba Wallace should have made it. He didn't make it. He's out. Kyle Busch, out. So that's three. I would say a lot of people had those drivers making the playoffs, and they didn't make it. Uh, the massive surprise going to be Harrison Burton. That's a huge surprise. I think a lot of people are surprised. Cindric made it. Uh, Suarez, let's just be honest. I think a lot of people were surprised there. And, of course, anybody from Stuart Haas Racing, considering how hit or miss they have been at times. So that's kind of your upset true wild cards. They have a potential of four wild card kind of races in the playoffs with Watkins Glen, the Roval, of course, Talladega, and then Atlanta. But we're going to kick off the first round here, Atlanta Motor Speedway, and then you're going to have Watkins Glen in Bristol in the round of 16. So these are not ordered by, um, organized by, points or anything i kind of just throw them together again this is not supposed to be a professional video of course <laughs> i have a raced with uh, die cast we've done reviews i think on all of these maybe maybe except the cot but that's besides the point uh, so my predictions for the first round we're going to go ahead and move some couple a couple drivers over again wild card racing atlanta is probably going to be bananas you're probably going to see a bunch of crashing um 400 miles there might not seem like a long time but I think some drivers are definitely going to get the boot. Um, they're going to be going to Watkins School and going to Bristol. Really wishing they have won more races. I'm going to say Larson is going to advance. He's got a ton of points. I think Reddick as well, uh, your regular season champion, I think they're going to advance. So these two cards are here. They're advanced. I'm going to go ahead and put another driver over there that I think will advance. I think Chase Elliott... I think he has been extremely quiet this year. I think he will advance. Uh, William Byron, he's been kind of cold. He hasn't been really in the spotlight. He won a bunch of races in the springtime, but I think he will advance too. So I'm going to have those four drivers advancing. But now this is where things start getting a little bit spicy, right? So those are the kind of the drivers I, I think are going to be not a shoe in but pretty uh, confident that they will have a, a first round uh, advancement. This is where things get interesting. Who do I think is going to win at Atlanta Super Speedway? If you look at it historically, Chevrolet has been very, very freaking good at this racetrack. Byron has won there twice. Suarez won there this year. Elliott's won there. You did have Joey Logano's random 2023 win, right? But I'm going to say... Ryan Blaney is going to advance. I'm, ju I'm just going to put that over there. I really feel bad that I didn't have a Suarez diecast to use for this. I, look, once the 2024 Suarez diecast come out, I promise you guys, we're going to be doing diecast reviews on it, so stay tuned for that. But uh, I'm going to say Blaney wins. I'm going to actually move him up here so he's kind of separated. But I'm going to say he wins Atlanta, okay? He won on the old configuration. Be kind of interesting if he won the new one. So we're going to put that out there. That he wins and advances so he doesn't have to deal with any of the shenanigans. Another driver <laughs> that I think might advance based on a good run at Atlanta. I'm going to say Brad Keselowski. I think Chris Buescher missing the playoffs is really a travesty because I feel like he has potential to make the Final Four. The guy won three races last year. He's proven he can win at almost any racetrack. I think RFK, they have a lot uh, left in the tank, so to speak. I think Brad K, if he can get through Atlanta without a hiccup, just top 15 at, 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 at Watkins Glen. He's won there, granted, a decade ago. And then, of course, Bristol. Oh, yeah, he's won there before. 
And my general rule for the first round of the NASCAR playoffs is very simple. If you don't wreck or don't have a speed and penalty, you're almost guaranteed to advance. There's 16 drivers. There's probably going to be five, maybe six playoff guys that will have a DNF, okay? By that alone, you're going to advance. If you just don't wreck and don't have a bad uh, speeding penalty, just come home 15th. Be average, okay? Just literally be average and you will advance. So I want to put Ty Gibbs into the next round, right? He's really consistent. He has not won a cup race yet. I still think he's probably going to be the next first time winner. But every year in the playoffs, there's always a few drivers we expect to move on that don't. And I might completely pick the wrong driver here, but I'm going to actually have Ty Gibbs having some issues. Gets caught up in someone else's mess at Atlanta. Maybe has a mediocre run at Watkins Glen. He has had some engine issues during the summertime. Who knows? And then you go to Bristol. If you just have a, if you literally just speed once at Bristol, congratulations, you're three laps down. I'm just going to say things are not going to go well for the 54 camp. I hope I'm wrong, but this happens every year. There's always a few teams that don't advance that we, we truly think would advance. So I'm going to take Ty Gibbs out here. I'm going to actually say Christopher Bell is going to win Watkins Glen. That's my pick. I know. I use that car. Look, the new Toyotas haven't been out, or at least the Truex is out right now. But, yeah, that's not my fault. <laughs> Blame the, uh, the, 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 the idea of waiting till freaking almost October to get, to get all the new Toyota molds out. And, and same thing with the Fords. I mean, only a few of them been out. We're just going to use the 2023 Fords for this video. So, yeah, again, it's not a, a professional video. It's kind of more of a, a fun thing. But I'm being honest with my predictions here. This isn't just for clickbait. So, I'm going to have Watkins Glen going to Chris Bell. So, Toyota's going to get at least another driver advancing. But we got eight drivers here. we got to cut some of them. I can't cut Denny Hamlin yet. I, I think Hamlin, yes, I know. At the time of this video, I've already seen qualifying for Atlanta. He had some issues there. Again, this is going to be airing before the Atlanta race, so I don't know how it's going to go. I just, Denny Hamlin is so good at Bristol. He's won at Watkins Glen. I think Denny Hamlin will find a way to get enough stage points in advance if needed. But this is where you have to pick a driver that no one expects to advance that is going to advance. And I'm torn between two drivers here. Austin Sendrick and Chase Briscoe, because I think one of these guys are going to advance. I know, crazy, right? Cendric wouldn't even probably be in the playoffs if it wasn't for his gateway win, which was Ryan Blaney running out of gas. I I don't know if I can count him out yet. Have I seen the consistency? Eh, look, every year there is always a driver that turns up the heat late in the season and is competitive. It might sound crazy, but I'm going to say Briscoe at least gets to the next round. So that's going to be probably a driver a lot of people have as a first-round exit. He's going to find a way to just just don't screw it up. But the problem is, guys, we still got <laughs> we still got three more drivers to cut. Look, Harrison Burton didn't run too well at Darlington. That concerns me. You're going to go to Atlanta. He's probably going to run pretty good there. Fords, they're really good. They're probably the best manufacturer right now in terms of raw speed. Doesn't mean they're going to win, but raw speed, they are at the super speedway. So he's going to have most likely a good run there. Most likely. However, Watkins Glen, ooh, Bristol, I, I think I'm going to have to eliminate Burton. I just don't see enough consistency. They're probably going to make a couple of mistakes. I really like Harrison Burton. It was an amazing win. But I'm going to have to have him eliminated in the first round. The next driver that we're going to eliminate in the first round... Well, I, again, I know. I, I wish I had a, a normal Daniel Suarez diecast to use for this. I don't have one. I'm sorry. I looked everywhere. We're using a Carl Edwards COT. I, I, I just don't see this 99 camp being consistent enough. If Ross Chastain misses the playoffs, which he did... I really don't see the 99 car doing much better because the one car statistically has been the better team. I don't see the 99 car advancing. 
Um, yes, they won Atlanta, but again, that's only one race of the round of three. You got to go to Watkins Glen. Yes, he won at Sonoma, but I don't see that track house speed that we saw in 2023 and 2022. I'm going to have them out, which means we have four drivers. Three of them will advance. There's been, you know, maybe some rumors that Alex Bowman might leave Hendrick Motorsports. I think he'll find a way to just advance. I think he'll just quietly find a way to advance, maybe quiet some of them rumors. Uh, who knows? We're going to go ahead and move him on, which means three drivers and one will be cut. Now, a lot of people here are going to want Truex to advance. It's his final run at the playoffs. He's the 2017 champ. They get two-time champion Logano. Again, every year there is going to be a driver that is expected to move on that is not going to. That's just how the playoffs work. If I had to pick one of these three drivers to not make it, <laughs> ah, that, that's a tough choice because Truex can win Watkins Glen. Logano can win Watkins Glen. Logano has won at Atlanta Super Speedway. He's won at Bristol. That is a very, very tough decision. But I, I just feel like the, the 19 crew is going to find a way to screw it up. I, I honestly feel that. I know. I feel for you Truex fans. But I feel like the 19 crew, they make too many mistakes. Bad pit stops, bad pit calls, uh, the strategy. I just feel like they're not going to find a way to get enough points and they're going to go to Bristol in a must-win situation, and you know how that goes. So I see Cindric and Logano finally advancing. Logano was eliminated in the first round, which I just don't see that happening back-to-back -back years. I I'm going to move these two drivers over. All right, folks, so it is time for round number two. Oh, yeah, who's going to win Bristol? I'm going to take Tyler Reddick. I think he's going to win the Bristol night race. I was thinking Larson, right? But I'm just going to go with Tyler Reddick. I think he's going to be one of the best championship contenders, maybe the top two. So I'm going to go with the 45 camp. But time for the round of 12. And usually there's always been one wild card round in the playoffs since 2014. And that's whatever round has Talladega. For many years, Martinsville was in that book. But with the short track racing regressed in the Cup Series... The true uh, wild card is Talladega. You're going to have Kansas, which, believe it or not, is almost a wild card race of itself because one and a half mile racing is arguably the best it has been in at least a decade. I'm not even kidding you. Unpredictable. You're probably going to see some tire problems, some hard crashes, and maybe even, even some tempers. Talladega, and then the Charlotte Roval. I expect the Roval to actually be the tamest race out of all three of these. However... If you get some weather at the Roval, if there's any rain, that could change everything because that is the cutoff race. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this one plays out. So we're going to pick the Kansas race first. I think Denny Hamlin's going to be really good at Kansas. But he's won there recently. I don't see him winning there again. I feel like... Byron. I, I feel like William Byron might get his first career win at Kansas in the Cup Series and just go ahead and just advance. He, he kind of just knocks off that, that, I would say, summer slump, but he gets back to victory lane, and he does so at a very, very good racetrack. Kansas, uh, a lot of success with Toyota Camp, so if Chevrolet gets that, uh, does Toyota win in this round? Who knows? The next one going to be Talladega. Kyle Larson's kryptonite is plate racing. Statistically speaking, it is his worst discipline of racing. So many DNFs, so many crashes, many of them uh, not of his doing. So Larson could get caught up in another wreck, and that could severely affect his playoff chances. However, the guy's got like 40 playoff points to the good. He's probably going to pick up a stage or two in the first round. 42 points to the good, give or take. I think he's going to be okay. Even if he goes to Talladega and crashes on lap one, he's so good at Kansas, right? He's so good at the Roval, I think he'll be okay. I got to advance those two. Now we got 10 drivers left. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look, <laughs> this is not going to be a popular pick, but there's going to be a heavy hitter that leaves this round. And this is coming from a Elliott fan. That just, I, I think the road ends here. One win 
throughout the whole regular season. Yes, he's been consistent, quietly consistent, but I just feel like not all the Hendrick cards are going to make it, right? They're not all going to make it. You already got Byron. You already got Larson. One of them, they're going to they're gonna shed one of them in this round. I think Elliott's going to probably have some issues. It happens. The next guy, Bowman. I, I don't see Bowman advancing if Elliott doesn't advance. Uh, Bowman has one win. Yes, it was Chicago, uh, the straight course, but I, I just don't see it. Now we have eight drivers left, two eliminated, two advancing. Hendrick Motorsports split down the middle. And you look at the field we have left, <laughs> a bunch of Toyotas and a bunch of Fords. So how do I see this one shaking out? Well, first we got to pick the second race, Talladega. Now, this being a massive wild card race, we still have to consider the outside shot drivers. I think this guy right here is going to win a race in the playoffs. Will it be Talladega? I'm going to say no. I don't think it's going to be Chastain winning Talladega, but I think he probably will win a race in the playoffs. Who do I think is going to win Talladega, though? Honestly, I'm going to have the number 17 car of Chris Buescher as the Talladega winner. I'm just going to go with that. So he wins Talladega. Um, RFK finds that win. So that's, you know, null and void, right? It doesn't uh, affect the playoff standings, except it takes a automatic bid away. I do think Logano's run is going to end in the round of two. Probably would get caught up in someone else's mess. I I'm just going to go with just knocking out Logano here. I who do I think? I, I think Tyler Reddick. He's going to have, look, he's a regular season champion. By this playoff prediction, he already picked up another win at the Bristol Night Race. So that's even more points to the bucket. Even if he crashes out at Talladega and does a barrel roll, I still think he'll have enough to advance. Into the next round, Ryan Blaney actually has a lot of playoff points. He has a lot of playoff points. By this uh, playoff bracket, we already have him winning at Atlanta. That's even more. I, I think Blaney won't have a problem advancing, so I'm going to move him over here. This is where things get really dicey because you have one more elimination to make. You know, Christopher Bell has won a lot of races, right? He's won a lot of them. He's won the Coke 600. He's won at Phoenix. By this playoff prediction, he won at Watkins Glen. He hasn't been really consistent throughout the summertime, but he's got some wins. I'm going to take Christopher Bell. I'm, I'm going to take Christopher Bell that he's just going to find a way to advance. Whoo! So we have two, I would say two heavy hitter type drivers knocked out. Chase Elliott and Joey Logano, two former champions. I think that is enough in terms of heavy hitters to be uh, knocked out. So I'm going to say Hamlin's going to advance by that. And then you kind of have the three wild cards. Why is Brad Keselowski a wild card? Well, statistically, he's just not won that much the last few years. And uh, I, I think that kind of puts him not in a wild card, but a little bit more of an unexpected category. One of these guys are going to go home. So who do we pick here? I think if Busher wins Talladega, it's going to be, Brad's going to probably help him. And I think they're going to probably do what's best for the team. So I think Brad will advance. We'll move Brad over. And we're going to move Cendric out of the playoffs. That's going to be our final eight. And our Charlotte Roval winner, I'm going to pick Larson. He won at Sonoma. I think he cashes in again. Try not to keep this video too long here, but... The final round before the final four at the race where nothing will probably happen at Phoenix and you'll probably watch something else. That's besides the point. You're going to have Las Vegas, Homestead, and Martinsville. So last year, Las Vegas in the fall was won by Kyle Larson. Homestead was won by Christopher Bell. And Martinsville was won by Blaney, which went on to win the championship. We're going to be going to Las Vegas. Who do I think is going to win that event? It's the Fall Vegas race. Who has been the dominant team at Las Vegas? Hendrick Motorsports. The amount of wins they have had at that track since Larson joined is it's pretty amazing. 
I mean, how many times have they won? Bowman's won there. Byron's won there. I think Larson's won there three times, two or three times. It's 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 crazy how many times they have won there. Which it used to be a very Pinsky dominated track in the Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano days. Not anymore. It is a Hendrick track as of right now, but I don't think Hendrick's going to win it. I'm going to take Chris Bell to win at Las Vegas. Wins, locks himself in, has no problems on the homestead. Homestead Miami is probably going to be won by one of the playoff drivers. It's it, it, it usually favors the championship caliber teams. But I got to knock one of the teams out, I feel like. I, I don't see a, a path that Briscoe will make it unless he wins. I don't think I don't think Briscoe is going to win. Yes, he almost won Martinsville in 2022. I, I think the road finally ends for Stuart Haas Racing there, and they're not going to have another championship. I'm going to knock one of them out, kind of make it a little bit more clear. Homestead, I, I think Blaney. I, I think Blaney could go out there and play spoiler and win at Homestead. He's never won there before. Just lock himself in. And now you have a very, very interesting final five competing for two playoff spots. One's going to be based on points, which if it ended right now, it would probably be a dead tie between Tyler Reddick and Kyle Larson. And then you're going to have one that might get on uh, by points. Here's the thing. I think Martinsville will be won by Ross Chastain. So we have two playoff spoilers. Busher at Talladega, Chastain just kind of coming out of the woodwork and winning at Martinsville. So that eliminates that, meaning it is based on points. I think it would be... I, I think one of them is almost guaranteed to make the Final Four, Larson or Tyler Reddick. I, I just think they have too much points. But that means that if you know you don't win Martinsville, Homestead, or, or Vegas, guess what? You're not going to advance. So I think Brad's out of the picture because he's going to have to win. And not that Hanlon or Byron have not won a ton of races. They don't have the same amount of points. I'm going to say Larson doesn't have any oopsie doos in the final round. And he advances with all the playoff points and wins he's had. And I think that would force Hamlin or Byron in a must-win situation. If they don't win Martinsville, uh, they're not going to be able to, you know, bump one of them out. But that would be my final four prediction there. All right, folks. So the final four of this playoff prediction. Of course, there's only one race left. That being Phoenix. I wish it was Homestead. Apparently, that might be in the works for 2026. They should have never left that racetrack. That's besides the point. Four drivers, one championship. Now, Blaney won the championship last year, okay? Logano won it in 22. So Penske has won both of the next-gen championships so far. I don't think they're probably going to win three in a row. I, I, I just, the sport is too parody-centric for that to happen. I like Blaney. I'm a Blaney fan, but... I just don't think that's probably going to happen, most likely. Christopher Bell, I don't think he's going to be better than the 45 car. I think out of those two, the 45 is probably a better team. And then you have Hendrick Motorsports with their 40th anniversary. I would be shocked if Hendrick doesn't win the championship in their 40th anniversary. The Martinsville win, the Daytona 500, the Brickyard 400, the Indy Double. I mean, they've had so many spectacular things this year. I would be shocked if a Hendrick guy doesn't win. But anything could happen, right? And out of these four, I, I'm, I don't know. What do y'all think? Comment down below. We're, we're going to make our prediction. Thank, if you got to this point of the video, thank you all. Of course, if you want to you know, help support the channel, make sure you use the promo code DieCastBuffet. You can get some of these awesome DieCasts. I'm going to take Blaney out of the final four. I just... When's the last time a driver's won back-to-back -back championships? Because I, I think it was Jimmy Johnson in 2010 and 2009, if I, if I am mistaken. Comment down below. The sport is way too parody-centric. It is uh, based on one event. You could show up to Phoenix and have 6,000 playoff points the week before, but if you go to Phoenix... 
and and you, you run over a thumbtack, congratulations, you don't win the championship. You can win 35 out of the 36 races by a gajillion seconds and go to Phoenix and your car just doesn't start and you don't win the championship. So that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't think uh, Penske's going to win all three of them. I don't think Christopher Bell is going to win it. Yes, last year he had a good shot, but had the tire problem, or was it tire or brake? He had a, a, a problem there and he crashed out. I'm going to take Bell out of it, and I think it's really going to come down to these two cats. I think this is the two best this season in 2024. If I had to pick a third, maybe Byron, but again, he just doesn't have the points. He's not been as consistent. Also have to pick who's going to win Phoenix as well. Last year was the first year a non-playoff guy won the final race uh, in the playoff era, which was Ross Chastain, which we have him win in Martinsville the week prior, which would kind of be a spoiler because everyone's going to be hyped up about the cutoff if that happens. Again, these predictions are probably going to be 99.999% off. That's okay. We're here to have fun. I'm going to say... Larson wins Phoenix in the championship. I, I just, it's the 40th anniversary of Hendrick. I, I just feel like they're going to win it. That's my honest take. I'm going to say the five ball wins. It gets his second championship. Ties Terry Labonte. He drove the Terry Labonte car in 2024. I'm going to say Kyle Larson. What do y'all think? Who is your champion? Make sure to comment down below. Uh, historically, I have been very, very wrong in these predictions. I think I've only maybe gotten the champion right once. Like, I'm not even kidding. Maybe once since I've been, I've been doing this since 2014. Uh, I would make like a little bracket or print it out or, you know, whatever and edit it and stuff and be like, okay, there's my drivers. You know, I think I've been wrong every single time. <laughs> maybe once I was right. But yeah. I'm going to say Kyle Larson gets his second championship in the 40th anniversary joint. What do y'all think? Make sure to comment down below. It would be my luck. Larson gets eliminated in the first round. I think a lot of people want to see Truex win the championship because it's his final year. But they've made some really interesting calls this year. They haven't won for a reason. You, you, you feel me? Like There's a reason why they haven't won. I don't think Truex is going to be able to make it all the way. But then again, we've been surprised before. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I, if there is a, I'll, I'll win the video on this. If there is a year to have a wild card champion, it's 2024. Because the 2025 playoff schedule is probably going to go back to the 2015 days, 2014 days, where not much is going to happen. When you have a New Hampshire and Gateway, very flat, basic, minimal action tracks. So if there is a, a chance for a Chase Briscoe uh, run or an Austin Cindric run, a Daniel Suarez run, this is the year for that to potentially happen because there are so much wild card events and it could knock out a Kyle Larson or a Tyler Reddick. That's all for now. Thank you all for watching. Have a blessed one. Hopefully these predictions... Don't age like milk. That's all for now. Diecast Buffet, signing off.